So hi everyone. Today we are here to solve the gradient assignment two for Java. And as I have told you in the last video, I'll repeat the same. So whenever you are doing these kind of assignments, you always have your playground ready. And the playground, I mean, any place where you can go and practice the problems that are there. What would it help you? immensely it would be you can try on the other possibilities and that will definitely come in your type and it will help you in correcting your writing skills for the language because on paper you're just thinking about the logic but when you are writing over here on any kind of um, uh, if, even if it's eclipse or other thing you get to know what are the correct syntax in the language so that is an add-on okay without waiting much of time let's start with our examples oh, I'm sorry let's start with the questions so the first question is that we have been given a, a plus and within that we are manipulating the two strings and they have asked that what would be the outcome for string 2. So there is one thing that you always keep in mind regarding string is that they are immutable. So whenever you are doing any changes to it, a new string would be created in the system and a pointer of that would be passed to the string variable. So, and this is a kind of question that might come, that mostly is asked in interviews that if string are immutable or not no they are not mutable okay. so now for this question uh, let me see what would be the outcome so yes we have two strings with us first string is welcome to iotn and this second string what we are using we are using a function substring to take string characters from 0 to 11 position so that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. That means welcome to plus space. That would be the value that would be provided to us by this particular operation. String 1 dot substring 0 to 11. And after that we are adding more string values to it. That is Java code. So all together the string that should come out here should be welcome to space java space course. So let's run this program and see what is the outcome. So the outcome is welcome to java course and let's see which option is it which option is it in our provided correct option. So Apologies. So the answer to this question would be option number three. Welcome to Java course. So let's move to the second question. And the second question is what is the output of the following Java code? So let's run it on the system. The answer is false. So the correct answer for the question second would be option second. That is this one. Here the correct answer is welcome to Jacobs. Moving to the next round of question. We are given a class definition where we are having two integer values i1 and i2 and a double value and double declaration d and then we are doing the division operation. 
So right now you can see that we are having the division of two integer variables. So two integer variables when divided will give you an integer value. So 29 divided by 10 will give you a round, rounded off integer value that in general would have been 2.9 but when it will be calculated here it would be 2.02 would be the correct value that would be evaluated and since we are assigning it to a double bit variable it will be type passed it to double so now here what we are doing here again we are first div dividing the values again within a bracket and then type fasting it so again the answer would be 2.0 instead of 2.9 now what's happening here is we are first type passing the value of i2 to a double. So a double divided by integer would result in the value being double. So here the evaluated value would come 2.9 instead of 2.0. So let's see if my explanation to you is correct or not. So I have the codes it ready with me here. I can just copy paste and run and see if my explanation stands up correct or not. Let's see which of the options there is this one so the answer for third is three so now let's move on to the next question identify the correct definition of a boolean variable named flag in java from the following okay so let's see I am okay. so I am copy pasting all these declarations here and then now let's see what does the Java says for these declaration and initialization at the same time. So you can see here that there is a wavy pattern beneath these values so whenever you see that means it is not the correct thing so here if I see cannot convert into boolean and if I'm hovering they're saying this true cannot be resolved to a variable and if I hover on false it says type mismatch cannot convert string to value boolean so if I if, if I run this you will see that I am getting errors also that is the beauty of the of these kind of uh, and that kind of interfaces that we have that they will tell you beforehand that you will get these errors you see you cannot, it is an incompatible type, integer cannot be converted to boolean, it's not valid value and again you cannot convert string to boolean. So now if I comment this, this and this one and run it. didn't show me any error here this one is just like that I haven't used this value it's just a warning not an error okay so now let's move to give you the correct answer so this particular definition is the correct one moving ahead we have a class named point and this was a very interesting question I really love this question 
so what is happening is that we are declaring a parameterized constructor that is assigning the value to the private members private data variables of the class and what happening next is we are while creating the object of the class we are passing the parameters from the main function now just assume or just think what shall be the right answer and i will seriously will tell you that you will be amazed like i was with this particular question mostly you would be thinking it should be 10 and 20 no for sure it's not 10 and 20 and neither it will be any garbage value so you will see what would be the answer and let me first show you and then explain it to you what is the logic behind it zero and ten i know you all be amazed now the thing is you see in the declaration of the constructor the parameterized constructor here and see then one of the parameters is x okay and the initial and the parameter or the data variable of the class is also x so when you are not referring to the particular object value and there is no way of distinguish between the parameter of the function and the data variable then what is happening it is assigning the default value that is of an integer to this particular variable now if I comment it out, say, and I'm referring like this in the function, and now running it, then the answer will be 10 and 20. Or the other thing, if here the parameter instead of being declared as x would have been t and then I would have used this thing and then it would have been 10 and 20 again. Okay. okay so here what happened was that it was not able to understand which value of x you were referring here was it the value that being passed or was it the value of the data variable and by default any value for in an integer is 0 so x by default this value 0 was assigned here so for this question the answer is 0 I really like this question. It was an interesting question to stop.